Bonjour tout le monde, aujourd'hui nous sommes lundi le 17 juillet, nous allons parler de la littérature du chapitre numéro 2 de l'étranger. Let's look at the chapter 2 question first. So, as usual, you have to summarize the chapter number 2 of part 1 in 10 bullet points, as much as you can. If you want to do that in 15, that's fine. If you want to do that in 7, that's totally fine. And uh, now we're going to be introduced some uh, new characters, especially Ma Marie Cardona. So, who is she? Okay. Why well, she surprised when she sees Merceau uh, is wearing his black tie and armband? Do you understand the surprise and why? Now, you know, this is a Sunday af after the funeral. Could you say that uh, Merceau has a simple life? Can you uh, give evidence for this? And then Merceau concludes the chapter number two by saying, J'ai pensé que c'était toujours un dimanche de tirer, que maman était maintenant enterrée, que j'allais reprendre mon travail, et que somme toute, il n'y avait rien de changé. In which way the statement is weird or out of place for you? And can you explain why? Okay, so now we're going to go uh, through the scans of the textbook and I'm going to help you with the, some of the vocabulary. My apologies, I've got a bit of a hiccup. Okay. Oh, so this is the chapter number two. En me réveillant, j'ai compris pourquoi mon patron avait l'air mécontent. Quand je lui ai demandé mes deux jours de congé, congé means uh, holidays or a, br a break. So, you can say, uh, j'ai pr uh, pris deux semaines de congé. I took two weeks holidays. Or, je vais prendre congé. I'm going to take a, a break. C'est aujourd'hui, uh, samedi. Je l'avais pour ainsi dire oublié. Pour ainsi dire is an expression to say in other words. Okay, and I remind you that oublié means to forget. Mais en me levant, cette idée m'est venue. Mon patron, tout naturellement, a pensé que j'aurais ainsi quatre jours de vacances avec mon dimanche, et cela ne pouvait pas lui faire pla plaisir. Mais d'une part, ce n'est pas de ma faute, si on enterrait maman hier au lieu d'aujourd'hui. Et d'autre part, j'aurais euh, eu mon samedi et mon dimanche de toute façon. Bien entendu, cela n'empêche pas de comprendre tout de même mon patron. So what do we have here? Here we have Mercer reflecting a little bit on what the first conversation he had with his boss when he asked for two days off. And remember the surprise of his boss? Okay. Mercer is trying to analyze that in hindsight. So now this is the day after the funeral and he realizes that he's got four days off because he took the Thursday and the Friday off. So he received the the letter on the Wednesday. So, before, he thought that the, the, his boss uh, was thinking that it was his fault, that his mom died, and he said, that's not my fault. And rem uh, notice that how Merceau is reusing again, ce n'est pas de ma faute. Okay? But now he thinks, ah, now, the surprise I saw in the eyes of my boss was the fact that he, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to have four days off, not two. So, same again. I think that Mercer got it wrong. His boss reacted to the fact, you know, his mom died, but Mercer still doesn't get it. Why he reacted like that? So, in terms of the vocabulary here, we have, okay, si on a enterré, to put in the ground, maman hier, au lieu de, in, instead of. Okay? Bien entendu means of course. Cela ne, ne m'empêche pas, doesn't, alors, to empêcher is to prevent something, to stop something from happening. Okay. So here we says, of course, though that, uh, that doesn't prevent me, doesn't stop me to understand my boss, actually. J'ai eu de la peine à me lever parce que j'étais fatigué de ma journée d'hier. I remind you that, you know, um, sorry, de la peine is either to have sadness, okay, j'ai de la peine 
I am sad, but you can say j'ai de la peine à travailler, which means I find it difficult to. J'étais fatigué, tired of my day of yesterday. I remind you that this is Saturday, so on a Friday. Okay, he traveled back from the old people. All people's home and the night before he stand vigil. Okay, uh, what do we have? Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, pendant. Oh, sorry. Okay. My bad, need to move on. Pendant que je me rasais, I've scanned an extra page too many here. Pendant que je me rasais, je me suis demandé ce que j'allais faire et j'ai décidé d'aller me baigner. So raser, to shave. Je me suis demandé, I ask myself, ce que j'allais faire. J'ai décidé d'aller me baigner. I decided to go and bathe, so swim. J'ai pris le tram pour aller à l'établissement de bain du port. Là, j'ai plongé dans la passe. Il y avait beaucoup de jeunes gens. J'ai retrouvé dans l'eau Marie Cardona, une ancienne dactylo de mon bureau dont j'avais eu l'envie à l'époque. Tram for the tramway. L'établissement de bain. It's basically the place where you can bathe in the port. So, uh, I don't, it could be uh, like a, a swimming pool, but what you can, can, can picture, it's a bit of a recess by the port where they have um, uh, created a kind of um, a swimming area. So this is seawater, but enclosed a seawater. J'ai plongé, I dived, dans la passe. La passe is the recess. Il y avait beaucoup de jeunes gens. J'ai retrouvé uh, so Marie Cardona, so we have the introduction of Marie Cardona, une ancienne dactylo. Dactylo is a typist, so basically someone typing, okay, on a, on a type, uh, on typewriter on a computer. Ancienne, not an old, okay, typist, but a form dont j'avais eu l'envie à l'époque. Avoir envie is too fancy, and à l'époque, at the time. Elle aussi, je crois. Mais elle est partie peu après et nous avons, et nous n'avons eu, euh, nous n'avons pas eu le temps. Je l'ai aidé à monter sur une bouée et dans ce mouvement, j'ai effleuré ses seins. Ok. So, Merceau mentioned that she left after a while and didn't have the time. Ok. Uh, didn't have the time to start a relationship with her. Je l'ai aidé à monter. To climb, une bouée, on the boy. So basically this is the floating boy uh, you have uh, you have on a uh, uh, swimming pool or in the sea. Et dans ce moment, j'ai effleuré. I brushed by. So I uh, brushed by. So basically I just touched gently. C'est ça, her breast. J'étais encore dans l'eau quand elle était à plat ventre sur la bouée. Ok. Uh, à plat ventre. Flat on her belly. Elle s'est retournée vers moi. Elle avait les cheveux dans les yeux. Et elle riait. Je me suis hissé à côté d'elle sur la bouée. Il faisait bon. Et comme en plaisantant, je laissais aller ma tête en arrière et je l'ai posée sur son ventre. Elle n'a rien dit et je suis resté ainsi. J'avais tout le ciel dans les yeux et il était bleu et doré. Sous ma nuque, je sentais le ventre de Marie battre doucement. Nous sommes restés longtemps sur la bouée, à moitié endormis. Quand le soleil est devenu trop fort, elle a plongé et je l'ai suivi. Euh, dans les yeux, et elle riait. She was laughing. Je me suis hissé. Ok? I, uh, so hissé is to climb up. So I climbed up. Okay, à côté d'elle. I remind you that they're going to, they're jumping on the boy, okay, on the floating device. Il faisait bon. Et comme en plaisantant, plaisanter, joking, wise joking, j'ai laissé aller ma tête en arrière. Laissé aller, I let go my head en arrière. 
and the back. So basically, it's resting his head. Et je l'ai posé. I put it down on her belly. So Merceau is putting his head, okay, on the belly of Mary. Elle n'a rien dit, et je suis resté ainsi. J'avais tout le ciel dans les yeux. I had all the sky in my eyes. Et il était bleu et doré. So reference of the colors, blue and doré, golden. So blue for the sky and golden for the sun. Sous ma nuque, ok, this is the neck. Je sentais le ventre de Marie battre doucement. Beating slowly. Nous sommes restés longtemps sur la bouée, à moitié endormi, à moitié half asleep. Quand le soleil est devenu trop fort, elle a plongé et je l'ai suivi. When the sun has become too strong, so it is shining hard, elle a plongé et je l'ai suivi. I followed her. Okay. So what we have, we have a nice description here of Merceau, uh, who's doing something he seems to be enjoying, swimming. The second thing, he is now, we can see an interaction with uh, a lady, because so far we have seen him only interacting with men. His boss, Emmanuel, Celeste, the soldier, the caretaker, the old people, uh, the, uh, the director of the old people's home, okay? Etc. Etc. There is only one woman he spoke to. That was the nurse, if you remember. So, the sun is too hot. Marie has decided to jump off the boy, and uh, she's in the sea to cool down. And Merceau has uh, joined her. He, he's got his la main autour de sa taille. He's got his hand around his uh, hips. Et nous avons nagé ensemble. Elle riait toujours. Sur le quai, on the platform, pendant que nous nous séchions, se sécher, reflexive verb for to dry oneself, elle m'a dit, je suis plus brune que vous. Je lui ai demandé si elle voulait venir au cinéma le soir. Elle a encore ri et m'a dit qu'elle avait envie de voir un film avec Fernandel. Ok I am browner than you, she says. So another reference to color. And Mercer replies, do you want to come to the cinema? Elle a encore ri. She laughed once more. And she told me that she fancied to see a film with Fernandel. Quand nous nous sommes rhabillés, elle a eu l'air très surprise de me voir avec une cravate noire et elle m'a demandé si j'étais en deuil. Je lui ai dit que maman était morte. Comme elle voulait savoir depuis quand, j'ai répondu depuis hier. Elle a eu une petite recul, mais je n'ai fait aucune remarque. J'ai eu envie de dire que ce n'est pas de ma faute, mais j'ai pensé que je l'avais déjà dit à mon patron. Cela ne signifiait rien. That's quite interesting here. Let's look at. So, rabillé, to dress back. She looked surprised, okay, to see him with a black tie. She asked him if I was in mourning. I told her that my mom was dead. As she wanted to see since when, I answered since yesterday. She stepped back. Reculé. Elle a eu un petit recul. She had a little step back. Reculé is to step back. Mais n'a fait aucune remarque. J'ai eu envie de lui dire que ce n'était pas de ma faute. Mais je me suis arrêté, but I stopped, parce que j'ai pensé que j'avais déjà dit ça à mon patron, cela ne signifiait rien. Et ce ne signifiait rien. That meant nothing. So now another reference to what happened with this boss. So Marie is quite surprised. Okay, so first of all, you can see that uh, everything is going quite well. They seem to be uh, enjoy, enjoying each other's presence. Uh, Merceau uh, uh, um, invites her to go to the cinema. She obviously says, yes, yeah, she wants to see a specific film. But then when they, because remember that they are the kind of a swimming pool by the port, Marie sees him with a black tie. And I remember at the time, 1940s, there was a sign of mourning. So she asks him, okay, are you in mourning? And he says, yes, mommy has died. But you, look what she did. She had a little gesture where she stepped back. It's almost like she's not uh, 
She's a bit shocked by that. Why would a guy who buried his mom, okay, recently, carries on wearing his black tie and his armband and go swimming? That's a good question, okay? Now, notice the reaction of Merso. Merso has the same reaction as with his boss. He wants to say the same thing. Ce n'était pas de ma faute. But he stopped because he knew his boss's reaction, so he doesn't want to give the same reaction to Marie. And he thinks that well, actually means nothing, which is right. It means nothing to say it's not my fault. And he replies again, de toute façon, on est toujours un peu fautif. And that is a quote I would like you to highlight. De toute façon, on est toujours un peu fautif. Anyway, de toute façon, we are still always a little bit at fault. Or here, un peu fautif is the adjective to make a fault, so to be guilty. So anyway, we're still, we're always a little bit guilty. That's an interesting, okay? concept from uh, Merso here, if you see, if you think what I mean, okay, because twice he has used the expression, ce n'est pas de ma faute, and now he says, actually, we're all a little bit guilty of something. So that's uh, that's an interesting quote, and I would say this is, a, this is a, an important one. So now we're moving on, le soir. Marie avait tout oublié. Le film était drôle par moments et puis trop bête. Elle avait sa jambe contre la mienne. Je lui caressais les seins. Vers la fin de la séance, je l'ai embrassée, mais mal. En sortant, elle est venue chez moi. So we have a long description of what happened during the day. And look how Merceau describes the end of the day. Justice. So we had almost like a page and a half to describe a bathing uh, kind of um, activity. And now, okay, we have quite a more important kind of a situation, okay, scene. And we have Marie avait tout oublié. She forgot everything. What has she forgotten? Forgotten who she is, forgotten the fact that it's morning. I think this is what is implied here. Le film était drôle par moment. Funny by, uh, at times. Et puis vraiment trop bête. Too silly. Elle avait sa jambe, her leg, against mine. Je lui caressais. Stro uh, to, to stroke something, les seins, her breasts. Vers la fin de la séance, at the end of the showing the screening, je l'ai embrassé. I kissed her but badly. En sortant, elle est venue chez moi. So, don't you find that interesting? The fact that, okay, it takes um, longer to describe a swimming session than a film. I think that the film lasted longer than the swimming session. I let you think about it. Quand je me suis réveillé, okay, so all of a sudden, when I woke up, so it means this is the morning, Marie était partie. Elle m'avait expliqué qu'elle devait aller chez sa tante. J'ai pensé que c'était dimanche et cela m'a ennuyé. Je n'aime pas le dimanche. Je me suis, alors je me suis retourné dans mon lit et j'ai cherché dans le traversin l'odeur de sel de, que les cheveux de Marie y avaient laissé. Et j'ai dormi jusqu'à 10 heures. So, he woke up in the morning and Marie has left. He knows why, because she had to go to her auntie. He thought it was Sunday and he was annoyed by that. He doesn't like Sundays. Alors je me suis retourné. He turned back in his bed. So basically he's rolling back in his bed. He looked for, okay, dans le traversin. Le traversin is a posh uh, expression for a pillow. L'odeur de sel. The odor, the smell of salt, okay, the smell of salt, que les cheveux de Marie y avaient laissé, that Marie's hair left there. So he's trying to look for, okay, some kind of, uh, a kind of uh, olfactive, okay, a sense, 
a sense, uh, yes, a sense, okay, kind of um, uh, feeling, so he can remember Mary. Allez, continue, j'ai dormi jusqu'à 10 heures. J'ai fumé ensuite des cigarettes, toujours couché jusqu'à midi. Je ne voulais pas déjeuner chez Céleste comme d'habitude, parce que certainement, il m'aurait posé des questions et je n'aime pas cela. Je me suis fait cuire des œufs et je les ai mangés à même le plat, sans pain, parce que je n'en avais plus et que je ne voulais pas descendre pour en acheter. I smoked. I was still lying down until midday. I noticed that he doesn't want to go and have lunch at Celeste. And why? Okay. Because they would have asked him some questions. And he doesn't like that. So what does he do? He cooked himself some eggs and he ate them straight away in the dish. So basically in a frying pan, he's eating straight away the eggs without bread. Why? Because he didn't have any more and he didn't want to go downstairs to buy some. Après le déjeuner, je me suis ennuyé un peu et j'ai erré dans l'appartement. Il était commode quand maman était là. Maintenant, il est trop grand pour moi et j'ai dû transporter dans ma chambre la table de la salle, de la salle à manger. Je ne vis plus que dans cette pièce, entre les chaises de paille un peu creusées, l'armoire dont la glace est jaunie, la table de toilette et le lit en cuivre. Le reste est à l'abandon. Ok, j'ai erré. I wandered, I wandered around the, uh, the flat. Ok, it was practical. Commode ou pratique are synonyms. Quand maman était là. There or here. J'ai dû transporter. I had to carry. What? The table in his bedroom. Okay. At the table of the dining room in his bedroom. And he says it. Je ne vis plus. Okay. Que. So be careful. Here we have a double negative. We have the ne plus, no longer, and we have the que. Only. I only. Uh, on, uh, um, so basically what he says is, I only live in this room, pièce. So be careful, the word pièce has many meanings. Pièce, if you're talking about money, that means coins. Une pièce. If you're talking about a house, this is a room. If you're talking about a car or a machine, this is a part. Okay. Uh, I think we can stop on uh, them three here. Okay. Entre les chaises de paille, paille is a kind of uh, some some hay straw, okay? So straw chairs, un peu creusé, a little dented. Creusé is when you dig a hole, it creates a dent. L'armoire dont la glace est jaunie, l'armoire de wardrobe. La glace, remember, has two meanings, ice cream or a mirror. And the mirror is yellowed. This is when um, the tint of uh, of a mirror after many, many years tends to uh, get a bit like uh, yellowish. It's a bit like the photos. This is time it does that. La table de toilette. Okay. La table de toilette is a device we had in the 40s. Until people had proper bathroom in the house, people used to uh, to do their toiletry in their uh, in their room so la table de toilette is a special table you have with a mirror and a kind of um, uh, a container okay where you can put water and you can splash your face etc etc et le lit de cuivre and the bed made of copper okay so it's quite weird here <coughs> because as you can see there's references to colors okay without mentioning the colors except once to have chaise de paille, okay, straw chairs. Straw is a yellow. And then we have the mirror, which is uh, oldish, and you use the color yellow. And the bed, which is made of copper. Copper, I know you're going to tell me it is orange, but don't you think that orange is the same kind of tone as uh, yellow as well? So I think what we have here 
is a kind of connotation. The yellowish color he's mentioning like that is to uh, a reference to the to the past. So basically, everything is quite old. Le reste est à l'abandon. Okay, abandonné is to um, to abandon, to let aside without care. Un peu plus tard, pour faire. Quelque chose, j'ai pris un vieux journal et je l'ai lu. J'y ai découpé une réclame de sel Kruschen et je l'ai collé dans un vieux cahier où je mets des, les choses qui m'amusent dans les journaux. Je me suis aussi lavé les mains et pour finir, je me suis mis au balcon. Okay. J'ai pris un vieux journal, I took old newspaper, I read it, découpé. I cut down une réclame. Une réclame is an old word for an advertisement. So this is a picture advertisement in a newspaper. For what? Le sel cruchen. I don't know what is sel cruchen. You might want to do a bit of research for that. Et je l'ai collé and I glued it in an old book where I put things which I find funny. Okay, so basically he has a little book, a collection, uh, a collector's book where he cuts down, okay, photos, articles, and advertisement which I find funny. Uh, what people used to do in the 40s to get themselves busy. I can imagine that there is not a lot of things to do. Cinema, work, restaurant, cafe, radio, swimming. Yeah, there's not very much to do. Je me suis, and then after he washed his hand and he went to the balcony. So now, I don't know if you read it already, but I'm going to tell you uh, the rest is very descriptive. It is basically Merceau who describe his Sunday, okay, from a balcony. And it's going to be not boring, but this is going to give us an indication about how he thinks because this is him describing what he sees. So it gives us an indication about his psyche. Ma chambre donne sur la rue principale du Faubourg. L'après-midi était beau. Cependant, le pavé était gras et les gens rares et pressés encore. Le pavé, the pavement. What he mean by gras was uh, greasy. So possibly. Okay, that's a reference to a greasy, it's almost like wet. Les gens rares et pressés, okay, pressés in a rush, et still in a rush. C'était d'abord des familles allant en promenade, deux petits garçons en costume marin, okay, un costume is a suit, marin, it's a navy suit, la culotte au-dessus des genoux, la culotte is another uh, term for the shorts, okay, au dessous des je, de, du genou, dessous is under the knee, un peu empêtré, ok, empêtré vient come from the word pétrin, de pétrin is the place where you're making the the dough for the bread, ok, but it's also used, ok, to say as an expression to say uh, you are in trouble, je suis dans le pétrin, I am in a deep hole, so I am in trouble, but être Empêtré is to be stuck, to be, uh, yes, to be stuck in something. So you can see empêtré dans leur vêtement red. Okay, stuck in their straight red, straight clothing. Et une petite fille avec un gros noreux rose et des souliers noirs vernis. Little girl with a big pink knot, I guess, on her head. Et des souliers, another word, uh, no word for shoes. Va a black, uh, uh, with a black varnish. Derrière eux, une mère énorme, en robe de soie marron, et le père, un petit homme frêle, que je connais, que je connais de vue. Il avait un canotier, un nœud papillon et une canne à main. En le voyant avec sa femme, j'ai compris pourquoi dans le quartier on disait de lui qu'il était distingué. Behind them, an enormous mother. En robe de soie marron. Soie marron. Brown silk. Et le père, un petit homme assez frêle. Ok? Frêle, another term for fragile. So you have a huge mom and a very fragile small man. Que je connais de vue. Connaître de vue, to know from uh, 
sight. So you don't know this person because you spoke to them, but you know them because you have seen them before. Il avait un canotier. Un canotier is a straw hat. Okay, the same way, the same that uh, they use in uh, Harrow in England, the, um, the boarding school there. Un nœud papillon, it's a bow tie, so un nœud is, uh, it, it's a knot. Papillon, a butterfly, a butterfly knot is basically the shape of a bow tie. If you look at it, it looks like a butterfly. In canon. En le voyant avec sa femme, j'ai compris... Pourquoi dans le quartier on disait que lui qu'il était distingué Voyant, voir. By seeing him with his wife, j'ai compris pourquoi dans le quartier, in the neighborhood, on disait de lui, people were saying about him, it was, he was distinguished. I think you should pause a little bit here and try to understand what he meant by that. So he sees basically a family, a couple, a man and a woman, and there are two kids. The man is small, look uh, fragile looking of his stature, and he has a straw hat and a little cane. His wife described as enormous, so big. And the two kids, one girl, one boy, and the boy is wearing, okay, a kind of navy suit. And the little girl, Okay, he's uh, and, and the little girl. She has a dress and a knot on her hair. So it looks like the typical family. But what's interesting is the fact that he says, "Now I understand why people thought he was distinguished." Push. Okay, I don't have an I don't have an explanation why he says that, but that's quite interesting because that is all about appearances. He sees some people, they look like normal, but he says, he goes beyond by saying, oh, I understand why they are distinguished, why they are posh. Are they posh because they work as a family? Are they posh because they're dressed like that? You see, it's quite puzzling. And I think that's left, uh, that's, that's left to us to try to make an opinion of that. Un peu plus tard, passèrent des jeunes gens du Faubourg, cheveux laqués et cravates rouges, le veston très cintré avec une pochette brodée et des souliers à... OK. Later à des gens, des jeunes gens du faubourg. Faubourg, et as you can uh, say this is the people from the outskirts. Cheveux laqués. Okay. De la laque et some gel. So, gel in their head. Cravate rouge. Ce veston très cintré. Cintré means very, very tight. So, un veston is a little jacket. A very tight jacket. Avec une pochette brodée. Une pochette is the little pocket on the left hand side, which is embroiled. Et des souliers, I remind you that soulier means shoes. Et des souliers à bout carré, square ends. J'ai pensé qu'ils allaient au cinéma du centre. C'était pourquoi ils, passaient, et ils partaient si tôt et se dépêchaient vers le tram en riant très fort. Ok. This is why they were leaving so early, and they were rushing towards the tram, laughing really, really loud. Après eux, la rue, la rue peu à peu est devenue déserte. Les spectacles étaient partout commencés, je crois. Il n'y avait, avait plus dans la rue que des, et des boutiquiers et, des, et les chats. Le ciel était pur, mais sans éclat, au-dessus des ficus qui bordent la rue. Sur le trottoir d'en face, le marchand de tabac a sorti une chaise, l'a installé devant sa porte et l'a enfourché en s'appuyant des deux bras sur le dossier. So after them, the street has become a bit deserted. The shows, so remember he's talking about like the cinema for example, étaient partout commencé je crois. Il n'y avait plus dans la rue que des boutiquiers, boutiquiers from boutique, so the shop owners et les chats and cats. Okay, so basically there is no one in the street except very few people. Le ciel était pur, mais sans éclat. Okay, au-dessus des ficus. Ficus is a type of uh, tree, okay, qui borde la rue, which are bordering the street. Sur le trottoir, trottoir is a pavement. Okay, in the opposite pavement, le marchand de tabac, the tobacconist, a sorti une chaise. 
took a chair out and he put it in front of his door. He, alors, enfourché, enfourché is very difficult. Enfourché, it is the same word you use when you want to go on top of a horse. So when you want basically to ride a horse. Have you noticed how difficult it is to uh, ride a horse? When you want to get on the horse, what you have to do is a bit like, uh, uh, more difficult, but like when you want to go on a bike, you have to put your leg really high up, go over the other side, and then you can sit down. But the same thing, just try to imagine that he has a chair and he is going to put the backrest in front of him so what he does, he put his hand on the backrest and put his leg above so he can sit down like that. It's a big, it's a big description for something very simple, don't you think? En appuyant les deux, les deux bras sur le dossier. Okay. So, I put back them here. En s'appuyant les deux bras sur le dossier. And by putting down the two arms on the backrest. Les trams toujours à l'heure, euh, tout, euh, tout à l'heure bondés étaient presque vides. Dans le petit café, chez Pierrot à côté du marchand de tabac, le garçon balayait la sure avec la salle, euh, dans la salle déserte, c'était vraiment dimanche. So, bondé means full. Ok? So, the trams were, which were à tout à l'heure, Previously, so that's a nice expression, previously, full, était presque vide, empty. Dans le petit café chez Pierrot, à côté du marchand de tabac, le garçon, le garçon is the waiter, balayait, means to sweep, la sciure. La sciure, this is, um, uh, uh, oh, how do, how do you call that? Uh, la sciure. Yes, uh, sawdust. So the the waiter was sweeping the sawdust in the deserted room. I remind you that uh, they are putting. Okay, sorry. They are putting a uh, sawdust inside the room for a simple reason. Okay, is to avoid it. Okay, to be uh, too dirty. And if there is some spillage of liquid, the sawdust absorb it and after it's much easier. So not have to mop. Okay, that's an old, uh, that's an old technique. Uh, J'ai retourné ma chaise et je l'ai et je l'ai placée comme celle du marchand de tabac parce que j'ai trouvé uh, parce que j'ai trouvé que c'était plus commode. So I turn back the chair. Oh, sorry, change the color by accident. So turn back the chair. And I placed it like, uh, like the one from the tobacconist. Why? Because he thought it was more practical. J'ai fumé deux cigarettes et je suis rentré pour prendre un morceau de chocolat et je suis revenu le manger à la fenêtre. Peu après, le ciel s'est assombri et j'ai cru que nous allions avoir un orage d'été. So we continue with the description. Okay. J'ai fumé deux cigarettes. Je suis rentré pour prendre un morceau, a bit of chocolate. Je suis revenu le manger à la fenêtre, at the window. Peu après, a little later, le ciel s'est assombri. Assombrir. Ok, sombre means dark. So, darkened. The sky darkened. Et j'ai cru, believe, nous allions avoir un orage d'été. We're going to have a summer, uh, a, a summer storm. Mais le passage des nuées avait laissé sur ma rue comme une promesse de pluie qui l'a rendue plus sombre. Je suis resté longtemps à regarder le ciel. Le passage des nuées, okay, une nuée, another word for nuage, new, uh, clouds, avait laissé sur ma rue comme une promesse de pluie. Let on my street like a promise of rain, qui l'a rendue plus sombre, which made it dark. Et je suis resté longtemps à regarder le ciel. À cinq heures, les tramways sont arrivés dans le bruit. Ils ramenaient du stade de banlieue les grappes de spectateurs perchés sur les marchepieds et les rambardes. 
Les tramways suivants ont ramené les, jou les, les joueurs que j'ai reconnus avec leurs petites valises. Ils hurlaient et chantaient à plein poumon que leur club ne périrait pas. Plusieurs m'ont fait des signes. L'un m'a même crié. On les a eus. Et j'ai fait « oui » en ce coin de la tête. À partir de ce moment, les autos ont commencé à affluer. So, things are going to change. Okay, everything was very quiet, but now we have les, les tramways sont arrivés dans le bruit. In the noise. Ramener, to bring back from the stadium, okay, from the suburb stadium, des grappes de spectateurs per, euh, perchés. Des grappes, okay, is bunches. Okay, une grappe de bananes, une grappe de raisins is a bunch of grapes, a bunch of bananas. Okay, uh, a bunch of spectators perchés, perched, sur les marchepieds et les rambardes. Marchepied, this is the step you have on a train, on a bus, on a tramway, when you can, you can step inside or outside. So this is basically marchepied helps you to step inside or outside. But because it's totally full, this uh, tram, okay, some people are staying there because there's not enough space. And les rambardes is the, um, it is the side, okay, of the tramway. So they're taking a lot of risk to come back. But I don't think the tramway is going to be very, very fast. Then the next one, the following ones, ramener, okay, les, uh, les joueurs. So now, one tram is the spectators, one tram is the players, okay, que j'ai reconnu à leur petite valise, a small suitcase. Ils hurlaient. They were howling, screaming. Chanter à plein poumon. Chanter à plein poumon. To sing on top of their voice. Plein poumon. Full long. So basically, they, 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 they shouting as much as their lungs can uh, allow them to do. Que leur club ne périrait pas. Périr to die. So their club will not die. Plusieurs m'ont fait des signes. L'un m'a même crié. On les a eus. So I remind you that on les a eus means we got them. But for the people who are a bit surprised because we have this S here at the end, remember, remember it's because we have a direct object pronoun. Okay? If you had on a eu, there was no S at the end. On les a eu, meaning we got them. Okay? Who did we got? Okay? The adversaries, the people in front of us. So that's become plural. We went through that already this year with a direct and direct object pronoun. Et j'ai fait oui en secouant la tête, by shaking the head. À partir de ce moment, les autos ont commencé à affluer. Affluer, come in, in. Like you can see the word flux there. So another time, Merso here, specifically, to avoid any conversation, when those players are screaming, we got them, we got them, what does he say? Just yes, to avoid the conversation. So Merso, so far, has said only one word, okay, during that day is yes. La journée a tourné encore un peu. Au-dessus des toits, le ciel est devenu rougeâtre, avec, et avec le soir naissant, les rues se sont animées. Les promeneurs revenaient peu à peu. J'ai reconnu le monsieur distingué au milieu des autres. Les enfants pleuraient ou se laissaient traîner. The day turned, so basically changed, encore un peu. Au-dessus, above the roofs, above the roofs, le ciel est devenu rougeâtre. Notice, rouge, rougeâtre. Ok, so red-ish. Et avec le soir, with the, um, uh, le soir en naissant, naître, comme, uh, naître is to be, to, to be born, so the, the evening was being born. So that's another way to say, a nice way to say is starting. The evening is, uh, is young. There we go. Les rues se sont animées. Les promeneurs revenaient peu à peu. Coming back little by little. J'ai reconnu le monsieur distingué. Le monsieur distingué is a distinguished man. He saw with his, um, uh, with his straw hat and his cane au milieu des autres. Now, changes. The man is, the man is always distinguished, but les enfants pleuraient. The kids were crying. Ou se laissaient traîner. Or we were 
they were they were they were letting themselves be dragged. So, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, when you see kids very 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 tired, they cry and uh, they can't even walk, and you see their parents holding their hands and literally dragging them. This is exactly what is witnessing now. Presque cité au cinéma du quartier, du quartier ont déversé dans la rue un flot de spectateurs. Almost straight away, aussitôt, les cinémas du quartier, the cinema of the neighborhood, ont déversé, pour down, dans la rue, in the street, un flot, a flux of, de spectateurs. Parmi eux, les jeunes gens, parmi eux, les jeunes euh, gens avaient des gestes plus décidés que d'habitude. Et j'ai pensé qu'ils avaient vu un film d'aventure. Ceux qui revenaient des cinémas de la ville arrivèrent un peu plus tard. Ils semblaient plus graves. Ils riaient encore, mais de temps en temps, ils paraissaient fatigués et songeurs. Ils sont restés dans la rue, allant et venant sur le trottoir d'en face. So the young people had some uh, gestures more decided. No. Uh, a gesture is not deciding on anything. Plus décidé means more uh, assured gestures, movement. So basically, they know exactly what they are doing. They're not like uh, waving their hand and their arms just like that. So, merso, okay, uh, possibly, okay, from this indication, he thought they had seen uh, adventure films. Like young people who have seen, I don't know, uh, uh, Star Wars or an Avengers film, when they're coming out, they want to reenact it. And this is what he implies. Ceux qui revenaient au cinéma de la ville arrivaient un peu plus tard. Ils semblaient plus graves. They seemed, okay, a little more serious. Ils riaient encore. They were laughing still. Mais de temps en temps, il paraissait fatigué et songeur. They seemed tired and dreamy. Ils sont restés dans la rue, allant et venant sur le trottoir d'en face. They stayed in the street, going and coming on the opposite pavement. Les jeunes filles du quartier, en cheveux, se tenaient par le bras. Ok uh, se tenait par le bras. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what it means by en cheveux, but me here, I think that it means that they have made an effort to have a very good hair uh, hairstyle. So basically, they made an effort to go out. Same thing. Uh, if you were to see some um, some uh, uh, some young lads, if they were dressed properly, you would mention that. Okay. Uh, se tenait par le bras. Holding by their arms. Les jeunes gens étaient arrangés pour les, cro- euh, les, les jeunes gens s'étaient arrangés pour les croiser et ils lançaient des, plans, des plaisanteries dont elles riaient en détournant la tête. Les jeunes gens s'étaient arrangés, ok, euh, s'être arrangés to organize themselves to cross them in the street. So basically they're going to walk, ok, by them. Et ils lançaient des plaisanteries and they were throwing jokes dont elle riait en détournant la tête and they were laughing by turning their head so what we have is basically Mercer described that the young lads make sure that they're on purpose they walk on the same pavement as the girls making sure that they're going to pass they're going to walk by them and whilst they were walking by them they were just making some jokes and the girls were laughing. Don't you find that interesting? Me, I found that very interesting in comparison, in comparison with the beginning of the chapter where Merso, the way he chatted up Mary wasn't like that at all. They hardly, actually, if you, if you look in, if you read once more this chapter, you're going to see that he hardly said nothing on okay, to Mary. He's literally, Mary said, Oh, are you mourning? And he says, Yes, mom died. And then after he asked her if you want to go to the cinema. And then straight away we are at the cinema. And then straight away we are the following morning when, Ma- uh, when uh, Mary is not there. So we have no courting whatsoever. But Merso here is describing how other people are courting. Like young people, okay, they dress quite well. The girls, they dress quite well and they do their hair. And they go to places where they can meet. Cinema, stadium, bar, 
okay? And then after, they do the normal thing young people are doing, okay? They're egging each other. They're trying to draw attention to each other by doing what? By making some jokes. So it's quite interesting that Merceau, he's noticing that, okay? Plusieurs d'entre elles que je connaissais m'ont fait des signes. And that is also quite interesting because many of them which I knew, signaled me. So what does he say? So we have some young people. We have a man. We don't know how old he is, he, but I'm going to tell you he's between, he's about like 30, 35. No, much older than that. He just slept, spent a night with a woman who used to work with him. He met literally from the morning before. And now he's saying, okay, that there is some girls in the neighborhood but he knew they're out and they make sign to him and he makes sign to them. What does he tell you? He tells you that Merceau is quite attractive. He tells you that Merceau is quite young. He tells you that Merceau, okay, okay, uh, has a social life, we're going to say, and this whole chapter shows that to us. Les lampes de la rue se sont alors allumées brusquement et elles ont fait pâlir les premières étoiles qui montaient dans la nuit. I like this sentence here. The light of the street, les lampes de la rue, se sont alors allumées brusquement. They lit up. Suddenly. Et elles ont fait pâlir les premières étoiles qui montaient dans la nuit. And they diminished the intensity. Pâlir is to, uh, is to diminish the intensity. Les, the first stars which were rising in the sky. J'ai senti mes yeux se fatiguer à regarder ainsi les trottoirs avec leur changement d'homme et de lumière. Les lampes faisaient luire le pavé mouillé et les tramways à intervalles réguliers mettaient leurs reflets sur des cheveux brillants, un sourire ou un bracelet d'argent. J'ai senti mes yeux. I felt that my eyes were getting tired. Tired of watching the pavement and their load, avec leur chargement d'hommes et de lumière, the load of men and lights. And when you say men, it's only men, human beings, as men and women. So the only thing he sees now is just people and the lights of the city is getting dark. Les lampes faisaient luire le pavé mouillé. Luire, shine. Le pavé mouillé. The pavement wet, the wet pavement. I told you last time, he talked to, he talked to it as uh, le, 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 le pavé gras, the greasy pavement. But grease, mentioning that he is shiny, so it's been wet. So now we have confirmation that it has been raining. Et les tramways intervariés mettaient leurs reflets sur les cheveux brillants. And the tramway, with in, regular intervals, mettaient leurs reflets sur les cheveux brillants un sourire ou un bracelet d'argent ou un bracelet d'argent, ok mettez le reflet, so what he's describing again is the trams put their reflection, so basically the light of the light of the the, the tramway when they were passing by they're putting some reflections on the shiny hair on a smile or on a silver bracelet. So basically, what he's saying here is there is reflection of plenty of things. And that's quite an interesting thing, what he says, because the word reflection is for light and as well for thought. And you can see that now what he's doing is offers us a time to reflect. He's saying to us like the light reflected onto the hair, onto the smiles, talking about the teeth, okay? And the silver jewelry offers a reflection. And this is why those Merceau here is reflecting on his day. Peu après, avec le tram, peu, après, peu après, avec les tramways plus rares et la nuit déjà noire au-dessus des arbres et des lampes, le quartier s'est vidé insensiblement jusqu'à ce que le premier chat traverse lentement la rue de nouveau déserte. OK Quartier s'est vidé, the neighborhood emptied itself insensiblement, so without noticing it, subtly, 
jusqu'à ce que le premier traverse lentement la rue. Until the first cat crossed slowly the road and de nouveau desert once more deserted. J'ai pensé alors qu'il fallait dîner. J'avais un peu mal au cou d'être resté longtemps appuyé sur le dos de ma chaise. I thought I had to dine. J'avais un peu mal. I was a bit in pain in my neck to stay so long appuyé, rested on the back of my chair. Je suis descendu, acheté du pain et des pâtes. J'ai fait ma cuisine et j'ai mangé debout. J'ai voulu fumer une cigarette à la fenêtre, mais l'air avait fraîchi et j'ai eu un peu froid. J'ai fermé mes fenêtres et en revenant, j'ai vu dans la glace un, un bout de la table où ma lampe à alcool voisinait avec les morceaux de pain. J'ai pensé que c'était toujours un petit manche tiré, que maman était maintenant enterrée, que j'allais reprendre mon travail et que, somme toute, il n'y avait rien de changé. He went downstairs to buy some bread, some pasta. He ate standing up, wanted to smoke at the window, but the air, the atmosphere was fresh, cold. Close the windows. Observing when he came back in the room, he saw in the mirror a bit of a table where his lamp was sitting next to the bits of bread. And then after you have the last bit, which I'm not going to explain because this is one of your questions. So this is um, an odd okay, chapter, very descriptive, quite short. Okay, so I'm looking forward to see what you're going to do uh, with that, guys. Okay, you take care. Bye-bye.